welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate and welcome to season five. We are kicking off season five with a full episode that is hopefully going to jumpstart the simplicity in your life, even more so than you already have. We're going to really fine tune the quality experience you have in your everyday life. So in episode 224, we're going to talk about how to welcome simplicity into your life by living differently for just one month. I'm going to break all of that down for you in today's episode, and I'm looking forward to it because I myself had a month away basically from my life in many ways this summer. And I started to think about it. And then I read a book about something that has sparked another idea and it all kind of came together. And I was like, I want to talk to my listeners about this because I think you too will see ways to deepen the simplicity you already have in your life. But before I get to that, I want to briefly mention what today's Petit Plaisir is. A handful of my readers have have highly recommended this and I do as well. And I cannot wait to talk to you about it because I think it will be a thoroughly enjoyable film to watch at the end of a long week, at the end of a long day just anytime. You're going to love it. I can't wait to watch it again. It's that good. So stay tuned as I'll talk to you guys about that at the end of today's episode. But let's get into our topic today. As I said, we're going to talk about how to welcome simplicity into your life by living differently for just one month. How are we going to do that? Well, I want to begin with a quote from the book that inspired today's topic. It's written by Elaine St. James, and it was written more than a decade ago. In fact, almost two decades ago. Oh, my goodness. And it was titled or is titled Living the Simple Life, A Guide to Scaling Down and Enjoying More. And here she says, one of the greatest challenges we all face is to find a happy balance between the opportunities that are available to us, the media implanted urge to have them all, and our own desire to keep focused on the things that really matter. So I want to talk about momentum for a moment. Momentum is a powerful source of energy. And even though I am far from being a physicist, I understand the basic concept that since all objects have mass, and if an object is moving, it will have momentum, thus it will have power and or energy. We are objects of energy when we keep our schedules and lives running. Whatever pace you are moving at currently, whatever gear you're in, whatever speed you're going, if it is a pace you have become accustomed to for some time, It is easier to keep moving along at this pace rather than slow it down and even easier to stay at that pace than speed it up. As we begin this season five of the Simple Sophisticate podcast today, and I've also included a schedule, by the way, of our whole seasons beginning today and ending up in next August of 2019. That's a link on the show notes for that. Many of us are stepping back into a fuller schedule with September or at least a slightly different schedule from the previous season, whether it is simply a busier schedule due to clients and staff returning from their holidays, or perhaps you as well are returning from your holiday, the pace tends to pick up. And if we aren't careful or conscious, we can move along with this energy without realizing that it may not work well for the balance we know is best for us. Now, granted, the pace you are stepping back into may be something you relish and it works well. And in this case, savor it, but simply be conscious of that energy that rolls forward and is easy to become swept up in without our being aware. If, however, the pace that fall or, or whatever new season you're stepping into, maybe you're stepping out of winter if you're in Australia and New Zealand and the Southern Hemisphere and you're stepping into spring. I saw some pictures from a few uh, individuals I follow on Instagram and they were showing pictures of spring and I was like, wait a second, wait a second. It's, oh yeah, it took a moment. I was really early in the morning. <laughs> 
<laughs> I have to stop and remind myself. But whatever new season you're stepping into, it brings us a, an opportunity to, to shift, to improve. And I have some ideas about how to do that, to instill this new pace of momentum that works best for our lives in today's episode. For the third time, I read that book, Living the Simple Life by Elaine St. James just recently, and she published it in 1996. And it was upon reading it this summer that a few ideas she shared jumped out at me that had not previously. The idea that most predominantly jumped out at me was her her suggestion to take a full month to live your life differently as a way to assess what you really need and determine what is helpful and what is actually hindering the quality of your life or hindering it from becoming even more, uh, having more quality in your life. Now, as I was reading this, I recognized that my own experience, having had the opportunity to travel to France for an entire month this summer, was something that did exactly what she was talking about. Now, during this time, as I've shared on the blog, I shared two different posts. I talked about doubting the default and how my trip to France woke me up. That was in episode 218. And I also wrote, why not let your brain calm down? And that was when I returned from France and it was all inspired by that month away. And I have links to it on the show notes, each of those. The clarity that I gained about what was helping and what was obstructing the quality of my life was illuminated. But upon reflection, it was the duration of the trip that enabled this to be more readily recognizable. So in this instance, the length, so perhaps we could call that the, qual- the quantity, was necessary. And I only say that because I have taken trips abroad, but it's been... It's been almost 20 years since I've actually stayed away that long, but it truly made a difference. And I know we can't all do that. We can't all go away like that. I'm not going to be able to go away like that. I don't know when ever again, perhaps at least not in the near future, but there's a way to do it right now in the life and the place that you are. And today, that's what this episode is all about, how to do that. Partly this was because after spending four weeks in another culture, any of us would become more acclimated than we even realize. And and so upon returning, there is an element of shock to our system. Now, at least for, for me, there was due to my fondness for the French culture. I really tried to step into that culture. I really tried to absorb it. I loved being there. It was my choice to be there. And so it was a shift back when I came back to, to Bend. However, as I just mentioned, I am confident that do, we do not have to or need to get away to another country to have this same experience, so long as we are conscious in the choices we make for that month. That month could truly shift our lives for the better if we go through this exercise. As a teacher, each summer I feel I am given this opportunity to reassess what is working and what isn't. But it is my choice to reflect and then put into place the changes I realize would be beneficial. I just happen to be a teacher, but there are many other jobs and ways of life that can provide this as well. So it's a choice. We can all do this. So here's the challenge and the opportunity. For one entire month, make one, some, or all of the suggestions I'm going to share here in a moment to your lifestyle that are inspired by Elaine St. James and my own experience and observations to free up more time in your life to do what you love or do nothing at all so that you can simply relax, sleep more, dream more, savor time with loved ones more, simply live as you please. With the month's conclusion, so you're going to go through that month, take an hour or a morning or an afternoon and reassess to see what differences, positive or negative, or just differences you experience. Now, I have a full list to share with you, but before I get into that, I want to introduce you to the sponsors of today's podcast episode. This past week, I had the opportunity again to try HelloFresh, which is a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, and enjoy. And as someone who loves to cook, there are more than a few times due to my busy schedule that I wish I had everything pre-organized, planned, measured, and ready to go, along with a peace of mind that the food will be fresh, responsibly obtained, and of course, delicious and healthy. 
let me share with you more about HelloFresh. There are three plans to choose from, classic, veggie, or family. And I chose the classic as you can tailor it for two to four people. And you also get to choose how many meals you want that week, two to four. I chose three. They will then send enough ingredients for the number of people you have selected to enjoy each meal. HelloFresh has thought of everything as each box is made up of fresh, responsibly obtained ingredients from carefully selected farms and high rated trusted sources. Whether you are a beginner or a pro in your home kitchen, you will feel confident when cooking HelloFresh as they provide simple recipes outlined on pictured step-by-step instruction cards. And if you are a curious eater or have adventurous eaters in your household, HelloFresh's glorious Global Eats option brings authentic international dishes and flavors to home cooks for exciting new meals. All the ingredients come pre-measured in handy labeled meal kits, and so you know which ingredients go with which recipe. And I can attest, each recipe will only take you 30 minutes or less. And I had another opportunity to have three of their meals delivered to my door. And one of the things I wanted to talk about this, because one of the things that I really am loving about their meal kits is that it's teaching me how to cook better, whether it's their apricot chicken or their thyme and honey pork chops. I am learning how to make different sauces, which increases my know-how in the kitchen as well as feeds me in the evening <laughs> as well. And it, and it carries over into my lunch. I usually have it for dinner and then I have the second part of the meal because it makes for two people. I have the second one the next day for lunch. HelloFresh makes their delivery service tailored to you and your schedule as you can select the day of the week you want it to arrive and change it as needed. Arriving right to your door in recyclable, insulated packaging, you can eat well and live well. The total cost is pretty impressive as well. Compared to paying for a week's month of groceries, you'll be paying less than $10 per serving and the shipping is free. And as a simple, sophisticated listener, the price is even better for a total of $60 off. That's $20 off your first three boxes. Visit hellofresh.com slash sophisticate 60, and then enter promo code sophisticate 60 to receive that discount. Just to give you an idea of what it will cost. That's like receiving six meals free or up to 50% off three boxes. Visit again, hellofresh.com slash sophisticate60 and enter promo code sophisticate60. Visit the show notes for a direct link and all of these details. And today's episode is also sponsored by Teamy Blends. Teamy Blends is an honest company that provides the best quality loose leaf tea, enabling customers to actually get the results they need and want, offering an easy 30-day program of drinking Teamy Skinny in the morning and then drinking the Colin Cleanse every other night. It couldn't be easier. The Teamy Cleanse can be added to your routine and will start getting rid of the toxins that are holding your body back from naturally digesting and metabolizing. Did you know that everybody holds about 10 to 15 pounds of these toxins in their colon, which causes you to bloat, have low energy, low metabolism, and have issues losing weight? When you remove these toxins, your body will feel much better. Get rid of the bloating and toxins, feel so much more energetic, and allow the body to lose weight naturally. Naturally. This is not just for weight loss. This is for your health. You will feel so much better by just adding this two-step program into your lifestyle. And as a simple, sophisticated listener, use promo code 15 simple for 15% off any order at teamyblends.com. Visit T-E-A-M-I-B-L-E-N-D-S dot com. That's teamyblends.com and save 15% with promo code 15 simple. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about the many different ways you can bring back or welcome more simplicity into your life by just living differently for one month. Let's get right into this. The first one, arrive at work either earlier or later than you do now, and then either stay earlier or later than you do now also. In other words, shift when you are at work to try to find more productive hours, but do not stay longer than you currently do in total. That's the first one. So again, re-examining what you're doing out of habit that may actually be preventing you from being productive or more productive. Second one, 
get up an hour earlier. While this may require of you to go to bed earlier, observe just for one month how the day begins when you give yourself breathing room to savor having more control in how you set the tone for the day. Again, it's just for one month, but just noticing the difference in your energy in the morning, it may take a few days, it may take the first week to get comfortable with this. But I think what you'll notice is there's going to be a difference in your approach to the day. And this may not even be one you want to try. Third one, stop watching the news. While this doesn't mean you don't have to stay informed as you can read or listen to the news, observe how no longer being the passenger when it comes to news viewing affects your attitude, assumptions, and stress levels. But you may want to take it a step further and for number four, stop reading or listening to the news just for one month to see what differences may arise due to the absence of perpetual information. Now, this is something I talked about in one of the posts I mentioned earlier the post about letting your brain calm down. Really for about that entire month that I was away, I really didn't pay attention to the news very closely. There are a few ways I I would check in, but I did notice that helped me significantly to truly realize how bombarded my brain and my mind had been and thus my nerves and my stress levels. Number five, change your exercise regimen. If you work out regularly in the afternoon, try working out in the mornings and observe how you go about your day and what it feels like to have the evenings free. If you attend classes in the morning, try taking them in the evening instead. Again, just for a month. Number six, turn off the television. Simple as that. I'll provide a link to a post that I talk about reducing the amount of television if that's something you also just want to kind of temper it but still shift it a little bit. Number seven, take a couple of personal or sick days. Now, this is not talking, we're not talking about a ton of sick or, 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 or personal days, but take more than you would normally or that you typically need and use them for your wellness. Use them to recharge. See how you feel. See what your productivity is like when you go back to work. Do them strategically, prepare before you leave, but see if there is a difference. Next one, talk to your boss to restructure your work days just for one month to maybe potentially, again, everyone's job's going to be different. It may not be an option, but if it is, consider asking. Ask for four days that have 10 hours of work instead of five that have eight hours if this is an option. The next one. Spend an entire weekend without making or attending any social or family commitments and give yourself permission to just do what speaks to you. If you can do this for more than one weekend during this month of assessment, you might begin to see helpful trends of what refuels you and replenishes you. Next, eliminate all shopping except for necessities such as groceries and vital personal items. Another thing that Elaine St. James recommended is for those 30 days, keep a list of all the items you typically would have bought had they been beyond this list. If they're not personal items or groceries, list those items that you would normally just buy without thinking about it or would like to buy. Maybe a, a piece of clothing pops up and you really would like to buy it, but you're like, wait, nope, for a month I'm going to put a halt on that. And then take a look at that list at the end of the month. And see if any of those things are, number one, still of interest to you. And number two, ask yourself why and would they be necessary? Another way to look at it is to do a tally of how much all those things cost and see how much you saved yourself at the end of the month. Next one, don't feel obligated to clean the house each week. Instead, pick up each day as you go and then clean every other week. Observe at the end of the month if this is indeed possible. Next, take a bath whenever the mood strikes. Morning, middle of the day, evening, if that's typically not in your routine. I started to do this um, a little bit more this summer and it was prompted by my trip. I will say that. I would take a bath every once in a while in the late morning. I, I don't know how to explain how fantastic that was. And it shifted my energy. Um, it depends on the day, obviously, but it's something to try to see what shifts for you. All right, next one. If possible, 
give yourself a long window of no appointments right after lunch as your energy begins to recharge from the fuel of food and the midday break. Now, in episode 194, I talked about the book titled When, and I actually, it was the Petit Plaisir. So if you do go to that post or that episode in the show notes, scroll all the way down to the end of it and, um, or, or skip all the way to the end of it if you're listening. And I talk about what he um, focuses on in his studies about the body and how it actually can peak if you get your at least a 20 minute nap in and rest after lunch, it can actually peak after lunch in later afternoon, as well as in the early, or excuse me, the late morning. So it's something to think about is to not just push hard the whole day through, but examine how the pace you go through each day and see if you notice a difference. Just be more conscious again of how you move through your days to increase your productivity and your pleasure, really. So your mood and your, um, your just enjoyment throughout the day. Next, simplify meals. You could use the capsule menu approach that I talk about often on this blog, and I've linked to that in the show notes. Make sure your epicery or your pantry is well stocked, and I have a link to that post where I list the 37 items to have in your epicery to be able to cook anything that the season may offer, and simply challenge yourself to shop and cook seasonally. Next one, stop using social media on designated days perhaps the weekend, or every evening after, pick a time. Be stricter than you might think you will do after the month. So maybe you think, well, I know I typically can't do the weekends, but for one month, I'm going to make sure every, maybe it's just one day, every Sunday, I do not check any of my social media, but I'm only doing it for a month. But then maybe you'll find that at the end of the month, it wasn't so bad and you really liked it. Who knows? Next one, stay off the phone, texting, or talking, except for emergencies for the entire month for making plans to meet in person. Sounds extreme, but often we welcome more internal stress with the conversations we have that are not face-to-face, when we can't see their expression, when it's easier to say or do certain things, when you're not in front of the person physically. Yes, there is clearly a workaround here to use social media, But if this at all sounds tempting to perhaps motivate you to see more people face-to-face, to to just simply text so that you can meet face-to-face, so keeping it very short on your texts, take this challenge, observe if there are any differences in your stress levels. Potentially, the quality of conversations may improve as you do spend more time face-to-face, and thus your relationships will improve as well. And last but not least... Spend a weekend or a day or even just an afternoon somewhere that will feel like an escape from the old habits that you are trying to tweak. Upon traveling to this destination, turn the phone off and be fully present. Engage, revel, and celebrate. Observe what feels good about where you are and the pace of the day or days. Now, the reason I say if you can... Um, Because when you're able to step away from the world, your everyday life, the the temptations stay at home too, a lot of them. And you're able to, I was talking about this with a colleague recently, we're talking about why is it easier to just relax and be myself entirely and completely when I'm traveling uh, abroad? And we both came to the conclusion it's because there's truly no expectations from anyone around you physically to do or be someone that you've been being. Even if parts of that person are truly or were truly you, if there was any part of you that isn't truly you or authentic, no one's going to know what you used to be. So they won't see the shift. And so I guess it's just a way to make it easier to get into good habits. Just the key again is to be conscious about the habits you're trying to recreate or create. All right. So that's the list of ways or things to try to either let go of or shift for just one month. Again, pick one, pick all of them, pick some of them and just do them for one month and then treat yourself to that day at the end of the month. So maybe October 1st, or maybe it's going to be October 4th. If you start today or tomorrow, put it on your calendar and your planner and say for that day on October 4th, which I think is a Thursday, 
or half a day or, or whatever it's going to be. Block it out. Make it as an official appointment to assess. And really consider how you feel and why it was or what you did that created that feeling or that improvement in your life. And maybe things were not, didn't improve with everything you did. And that's another thing to look at as well. Initially, this list that I've just shared may seem impossible, but remember, it is only for one month and choose which ones pique your interest or affect areas in your life you want to improve. Again, remind yourself as you begin the month with anything that may be difficult, it is only for one month. And it probably will be more difficult initially. Push through that. Hang in there. And if you want it tweet to me or you want to DM me on my Instagram, I'll provide you with inspiration, motivation, whatever I can do with regards to, you know, connecting in that way, but just not on the days that we're not going to be checking social media, right? (laughs) Because perhaps if you're like me, I've been trying to stay off social media in the evenings. I've been trying to get my work done by a certain hour and then putting my phone, my phone always goes to my office at night now. I'm getting far better at that and it's made my nights far more rest filled But push through that first tough week if that's what you're feeling. And then keep going for three more weeks. That's all you would have. And see how it goes. For one month, here's an example from my own life. For one month, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I didn't watch the news. And by doing this, it made it far simpler to return to the States and not turn it on at home. As I mentioned last week, how I have adjusted is to watch M. BR, that's a nightly business report, an economics report. And then I read a daily brief each morning about the highlights from the day's news from yesterday. That's it. Anything else I have found to be very jarring for me, more so than I've ever felt before. And it was something that I don't know if I would have felt had I not had that month away. And initially, obviously, it was unintentional. As far as I wasn't consciously saying, don't watch the news. I was just enjoying my trip. But then I did start to think about it when I started to get into routine at some of the places I was staying. I'm like, oh, I kind of like this. And I stuck to it for the most part. This is where momentum comes into play. It is very hard to shift gears as behaviors become habituated, even behaviors that are not helpful, as we know. And so when we initially begin to change the habit or behavior, we think the difficulty is due to it not being what is best for us. However, in truth, it is simple science. Anything new, any shift of energy is slow and awkward until it gets going at a good and steady pace. Give yourself the full month to make the shift and redirect your momentum. When we discover that the blue sky was deeply blue today, far more than it was last week, we realize the pace we have been living previously was not allowing us the ability to be present, to observe, and to appreciate how blue that sky really was. That's just an analogy, but or that's just one example, I should say. But in other words, if you begin to see that you're able to be more present and appreciative because of some of the things you're letting go or shifting. Consider if that's improving the quality of your life. And if it is, keep those changes in place or in, in place in such a way that would enable you to continue to be present. Such appreciation is part of improving the quality of our lives. And when we return after the month we challenged ourselves to above or in what the list I just shared and begin to watch some television, for example, we do so more discerningly, more thoughtfully, as we now recognize that indeed what we watch indirectly affects our emotions and thus the quality of our lives. May in one month's time you have more free time and therefore a life of increased quality. I know you can do it. Now, I've included four more episodes in post um, in the list of similar posts that you might enjoy. Some of them have to do with our thinking. Another one has to do with how to live a life of quality. I've also shared a, a post that shares a list of 26 ways to create the life you want, as well as episode 206, which are simple life hacks to get your life back on track. So if you want to go deeper into this topic, 
Those posts or episodes are on today's show notes at simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 224. And now I'm going to take a quick break and come back with this week's Petit Plaisir. I think you're going to love it. I'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. All right. Two weeks ago on the weekly This and That, I shared that the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, the book that was an international bestseller back in 2009, was a movie or a film on Netflix. And I also shared with you that I had not read this book yet, this novel yet. And it's only been, you know, 11 years, nine years, I guess, nine years. But I wanted to read it. And I have put a hold on it in my local library. So have 15 other people. And there are only five copies in the library. So I'm waiting very patiently. And I could not wait, guys. I couldn't wait to watch the film. Especially after a handful of you in the comments of that post said, you're going to love the film. It's great. And I trust you guys. And so last weekend, I watched it. And I smiled and I laughed and I cried and I cried tears of happiness and sadness and at the end lots of tears of happiness and I can't read, wait to read the book the book the novel is is of the same title and I think it's an interesting story if you don't know the story behind the author I'd like to share that with you today the author if you notice on the cover of the book is has two names you have Marianne Schaefer and you have Annie Barrows Now, the primary author is Marianne Schaefer, and it was her niece, Annie Barrows, who finished the novel when Marianne passed away in 2008. But I'd like to read you a biography from bookreporter.com that shares where Marianne got the idea for the book, the novel, The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. So this is this is read from bookreporter.com. Marianne Schaefer became interested in Guernsey while visiting London in 1976. On a whim, she decided to fly to Guernsey, but became stranded there when a thick fog descended and all boats and planes were forbidden to leave the island. Now, if you know, this is a pause for a second in, in, the, in the biography. Guernsey is an island, if you've never read the book, it's an island off the north shore of Normandy, France, but it's under, but not part of, it's under the, the, um, the United Kingdom. It's part of the United Kingdom. So it, they do speak English on the island. Um, and so therefore they were part of the Allies during World War II. All right, back to the biography. As she waited for the fog to lift, warming herself by the heat of the hairdryer in the men's restroom, she read all the books in the Guernsey Airport bookstore, including Jersey Under the Jackboot. Thus began her fascination with the German occupation of the Channel Islands during World War II. Many years later, when goaded by her book club to write a novel, Marianne naturally thought of Guernsey. She chose to write in the epistolary form, which is a form of letters. The novel is a form of a bunch of letters back and forth because, quote, for some bizarre reason, I thought it would be easier, end quote. Several years of work yielded the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society novel, which was greeted with avid enthusiasm, first by her family, then by her writing group, and finally by publishers around the world. Sadly, as I mentioned, Marianne's health began to decline shortly thereafter, and she asked her niece, Annie Barrows, to help her finish the book. So you have a book that tells a fantastic story about a young author, female author, in London, who makes a connection with one of the residents on Guernsey Island just after World War II. And there are a lot of progressive ideas with regards to the fact that you have this successful woman writer who has her own means, who has her own money, and you have various shifts in society that are happening. And again, I haven't read the novel, just watch the movie, but I think you will be delighted by it. And one part of the deli- what I'm delighted by is who they chose to play the protagonist Juliet Ashton, actress Lily James, 
who you may remember from Downton Abbey. She played Lady Rose Aldridge. She stars as Juliet Ashton. And she does a phenomenal job, in my opinion. And, well, I'll let you listen to the trailer. Here is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Miss Ashton? Yes? Have you always wanted to be a writer? It's a perfect job. Sitting indoors, always near a teapot. (laughs) Dear Miss Ashton, my name is Dorsey Adams. I am part of a book club, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. You did that beautifully. It brought us together during the occupation. Juliet, you can't go to a book club meeting on the island of Guernsey. What reading did for these people. Finally, I'll have something serious to write. Can't imagine Mark would let you get very far anywhere. It's English Channel, not the China Seas. (laughs) Dear Mr. Adams, I so hope that you might allow me to come and meet your society. So happy to make your acquaintance. (laughs) Dorsey! Um, hello. Hello. You painted such a vivid story in your letters. It's so compelling. You are not what I expected. How did you imagine me, Mr. Adams? Juliet! Ah. My life's in London. There's nothing to keep you here. We'll still write to each other, won't we? Yes, of course. It's my mistake bringing you back too quickly. I'm afraid. I've seen you reach what you want. You have that courage. If books do have the power to bring people together, this one may work its magic. I suppose it's possible for us to already belong to someone before we've met them. If so, I belong to the spirit I found among you on Guernsey. The love story itself is beautiful, but there's even more inspiration in the empowering of the individual to listen to their inner voice, to trust it, to explore without promise but to trust one's own journey. I think you will enjoy it as well. And I look forward to finally reading that book when it becomes available. Thank you for those that emailed me as well for the recommendation and for those who commented on the this and that to share their, their feel, their feedback on the film. That's the Guernsey literary and potato peel pie society film. That's now available on Netflix. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Before we wrap up today, I just wanted to talk about a few different items of business. First of all, I wanted to express a thank you to... Uh, a reader or a listener, I should say, who left a review on iTunes that just bowled me over, completely just, I was like, what? And I wanted to share it with you. Just to be mentioned in the same breath, in a positive breath as this individual, just, anyway, I'll read it for you. The review for the show was a five-star review, and it came from Eve Bode, and they wrote, as good as Oprah, my new best friend, I love having these podcasts to listen to, and I really feel like I am listening to a girlfriend giving me tips. Eve, I want to thank you for such an awesome comparison. As I said, just to be mentioned, any positive breath with Oprah is is humbling, and I, no one obviously can be Oprah, but um, just to be considered anywhere, anywhere in the positive aspect of her, of her, I am touched by your kind. A review. If you too are enjoying this podcast, take a moment. You don't even have to write a review. You can just star share the starred review of what you, um, how you feel about the podcast. What it does when you do write a review, though, it shares with other potential listeners what they will discover when they tune in. And a few other things before we wrap up. 
Um, the fall shopping guide, the annual fall shopping guide just went live over the weekend on the blog. You can visit that and shop all the trends I've recommended for investing in this season. I've also shopped a bunch of them for you. It's clickable. Just click, click right on that post, be taken to a variety of different, um, high and medium priced items. I've also included more plus size items as well on this season's shopping guide. So check that out. The link is on the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com slash podcast 224. Also, I'm so excited for this Saturday, September 8th. Finally, finally, thank you for your patience. The first season of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen will premiere. And we will be running eight episodes every Saturday. So all of September and all of October, every Saturday, bright and early, you'll be able to watch a full episode. Right now, they're running about 30 minutes long. And I just cannot wait. I, I, I hope you enjoyed as much as I have enjoyed creating them. I've been eating very well this summer as I've been producing them. And um, anyway, it's it's been a labor of of excitement and and. Anyway, I, I'm excited to share them with you. That's this Saturday, September 8th, the Simply Luxurious Kitchen debuts season one. All right, guys, I'll let you go. I hope you have a beautiful first full week in September. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pre-order Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, which will be released on November 13th, 2018. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is now available in paperback, as well as ebook and audio version versions on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon, or wherever ebook and audiobooks are sold. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.